If you've struggled with gel polish, I think we might know why. This video is gonna focus on five common mistakes that beginners make. We're gonna jump into this right now. Today we are going to cover five mistakes you can make when doing gel polish. A lot of times when we are covering tips, tricks, mistakes, we talk about acrylic and gel and we kind of forget about gel polish, but gel polish is such a common service and there are a few things that you can do that are gonna cause you problems, or I did, that caused me problems, so I'm gonna share with you what I did wrong so you don't do it wrong and we all have successful sets. We're gonna start by pushing back the cuticle. The first issue that I see that people have when it comes to doing a natural nail application is we have kind of educated our customers that this is a natural nail service. So basically we barely do anything. We kind of file and shape the free edge. We might take a light buffer and then cleanse it and then that's it. Here's the issue. Gel polish is an enhancement. Anything but polish to me is an enhancement. So therefore, if I wanna know that this product is gonna last, I'm gonna prep her nail with a medium grit arbor band just like I would for a hard gel or an acrylic. Very lightly, but I do the same thing when it comes to an artificial enhancement. But again, this is an artificial enhancement. So let's prep it. Okay, we're gonna get our medium grit arbor band. Now guys, every once in a while someone will comment and they'll say, you're using a dirty arbor band. This was used on stuff. <laughs> we only use it on stuff or the trainer hand, but this was just put on and used on stuff earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it, save some money. We're gonna turn it on low. Again, I just work around three, 4,000 RPMs. And then we're gonna take our hand just like I would if we were doing an artificial. I'm gonna pull that skin back so I can tuck right back there. I'm just gonna lightly tuck in follow through and just gently remove the shine. Again, not aggressive. She still has a little acrylic on there, but we're gonna call it a day. I'm not aggressive when I do an acrylic or gel prep. So it's the same prep to me, but now I know my product's gonna stay and it's not gonna peel away. One of the reasons if you're getting peeling could be that you are just smoothing nail out way too much and there's nothing for it to stick to. The next problem we can run into, let's go ahead and cleanse this. Well, actually this could go along with it, but I'm not gonna include it. We'll just give this a little side note, is not cleansing the nail. We gotta make sure we get rid of that oil and dust and everything from it. But the next issue is thinking that gel polish can really stick to anybody's nails. Really, I give my client what they need. If they have severely thin nails, I might actually put a thin, uh, overlay of a hard gel, or maybe I would do it in dip powder instead. But if a client has a semi, which Steph's nails are extremely strong, so gel polish is gonna stick, no problem. But let's say she had a semi-thin nail and she had a little flexibility on it. I wouldn't wanna go just typical base, into color, into top coat. We will need to give herself some strength, a little foundation to the nail, so that gel polish has something to stick to. So what you can do, I'm gonna give you a couple options. You decide what you'd like to do. First of all, we're gonna protein on the nail because that's important. Now, if you're gonna soak, of course, we would just do the free edge. I don't soak, I electric file off, so I'm gonna go ahead and protein bond the whole nail. Guys, if you're gonna soak a nail, do not protein bond the whole nail. You will never get that stuff off. You will be saying many, many bad words. So don't protein bond all the way if you're gonna soak with acetone. But if you electrify like me, go ahead. So here are our options for thin nails. We could grab our manicure in a black tub, which we get a lot of questions about, so we'll go over. Or we could grab base. I'll explain what we can do with base real quick. If, for instance, I didn't have this, typically I would just grab this for someone that has thin nails. But let's say you're like, I have someone with thin nails, very next appointment, and I don't have manicure in a tub. Go ahead and grab your base. What you would do is you would go ahead and coat her in base, cure for about 15, 20 seconds, put another coat on, double it up, even triple it up if you need to, to give her some foundation, some strength. But the other option is to go ahead and grab this clear. 
And I like doing this also with people that have really a lot of ridges to their nails. This kind of smooths it all out. It's got a thicker consistency. So just basically think of this as manicure base in a bottle, but in a tub and it's thicker. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And this way, if you have someone with ridges or really thin nails, you can kind of fill it in. You can kind of float it. You can add a couple coats if you need to, but you can see it's really just thicker. Okay, so we're gonna go get that in light. So it's just a tad thicker than the manicure in the base in the bottle. So it's just a quicker way. Instead of doing two coats of the bottle, you're just doing one coat of the tub. And we're just gonna cure that for about 30 seconds. Same cure time as anything else. So we have one and two. One, not prepping enough. Two, not putting the right foundation on a customer who has thin nails. Three, we're gonna go into our color. Three would be applying it and getting it on up and on that skin. I am purposely putting this on your skin stuff. I am sorry. Right here. You see how it's up and on her skin? If I leave that, it's gonna cure like that and it's gonna pull away. May not happen today. First of all, it doesn't look all that good. Second of all, in a day or two days, it's gonna peel up right there and it's gonna start lifting. Either it'll lift on its own or the client's gonna feel that it's lifted and it's gonna start picking at it. Eventually, this whole thing is gonna be off. It happens, we get stuff on the skin sometimes, we try not to. It's best not to get stuff on the skin, but if you do, we definitely wanna clean it up prior to putting it in the light. So I'll just use this brush and a little thumbnail. Okay, we got it off. Now it's safe to go into the light. What does that mean? If you are working on the whole hand, maybe you don't wanna go all five fingers. Maybe you wanna do one or two at first. Depends on the day. If it's hot, it's runnier, I may just do one. If it's colder and it's firmer, I might be able to get all the way through five. It really doesn't matter because as this hand's in the light, I'm working on the other hand, one or, one or two fingers. Get that in the light. Come to this hand, one or two fingers, get this in the light. So it's like a bad game of the hokey pokey, but you're in constant movement. So it's not costing you any time. We're gonna do a second coat because we can talk about how we apply the second coat. And if you notice, my coats aren't super, super thick because if it's super, super thick, then it has a hard time curing which brings me to our next tip. If you're having trouble curing, you're gonna get bubbles, you're gonna get lifting, and you're gonna get peeling. Now, there's a couple different reasons why that can happen. One, you put the product on too thick, especially if you're working with dark colors. You can see, I, I'm not applying it so thin that it's sheer. I put a good amount, it covers in two coats, but if, Sometimes it goes on so nicely, we're like kind of floating it and just glopping, is glopping a word? We're gonna use it. Glopping the product on, right? And then it has a hard time curing. Another reason it can have a hard time curing is because you're working with the old light. Guys, lights, I know that they say 50 million quadrillion times infinity hours of use. It's, it eventually wears out. Personally, I change out my lights once a year, even LED lights. That way I don't have to worry about it. I know that it's good, but some people, even when we were working with UV lights, it always seems like you just replaced them and you start asking them, well, how, when's the last time you replaced it? When's the last time you replaced your bulbs? And they're like in 1973, it's like, mm, it's time to change. <laughs> it's time to update. So if you're having all of a sudden out of the blue, you're getting peeling or lifting or you're getting bubbling, it might be time to switch out your gel light. Okay, going back to applying her top coat, this is also another place that if you decide, hey, you know what? Her nail is still kind of bendy and a little flexible, going back to having that foundation and enough strength on it, you can top coat once, get it in the light, 
for a couple seconds, let it set up and put another coat of top coat. So if you don't want to double base, then double top, top coat. As long as you eventually have enough gel on that nail to make it strong, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to number five. And this has to do with artificial nails, applying gel polish to artificial nails. If you're getting peeling, this is usually the number one reason why, is we finish the nail with our 150 file, right? We get it nice and scored and roughed up and textured and our old school DNA comes back to us and we're like, we must buff. We must take a buffer, a 180, or you know what, better yet, let's get a 240, a really fine buffer, and let's smooth that whole nail out because it's what we were taught and it just makes us feel good. This was a hard habit for me to break. But guys, if you do this, you've just smoothed everything out right? You've smoothed it out. Now we're going to apply a gel polish to the top and hope and pray that it's going to last. And it's not. We have to leave a texture. Now, here's the other way people do this and get it too smooth is they're like, okay, Tracy, I got gotcha. you. I'm going to rough it up. I'm going to use my 150. All good. I did what you said, but now I'm going to pretend this is acetone. Now I'm going to take acetone, which this is kind of pretty much acetone is our polish remover. And I'm going to go ahead and cleanse it with this. And I'm going to rub it in. Guys, what happens when you stick acrylic nails into acetone? It starts to melt it. So if I'm taking acetone and I'm rubbing the top with acetone, I have just smoothed the nail out. I have totally just went backwards. I have fought the reason, the whole reason why I did the 150 file. Now the nail is completely smooth again, and we're gonna run into the same issue. Also in that area too, I do not, this is kind of a part B to number five. I would never do this. Okay, we got it rough. Okay, Steph, go ahead and go wash. Why don't I not do this? Because first of all, there's a couple things that are gonna happen. A lot of soaps have oil. So it'd be basically like applying rose oil to the nail right now and hoping that the gel polish lasts. It's like oil and vinegar, is, it, is that the right term? Oil and water, I don't know. I don't cook or any of that. So it's something, the two contrasts, <laughs> um, it's just not gonna work. It's gonna bubble, right? Or soap has oil in it and you're gonna, it's, you're, they're gonna come back and you're like, it's kind of pitting. It's doing this weird thing. I don't know why. It's usually because the soap had oil. Or, number one, they sit in the mirror and they do this, right? And what have they put all over their hands as they fix their hair? They've put the oil from their hair onto their nail. So we don't do that. I literally just take my swipe after I've done my 150 file. Fight the urge, people. Fight the urge to to smooth it out with a buffer. We're gonna cleanse it off really quickly. And then do that to all 10 fingers. We're gonna come back. We're gonna do our protein bond, the whole surface of the nail. Now I'm not gonna go protein bond product right away. I'm gonna finish all 10 nails. Let it get a little tack, a little setup. Don't overthink it. Just finish all 10 nails and then you're ready to go. And then you can go into your gel polish. So after that, we can just grab our gel polish and go right into it. Finish it out. We do not need base when we're working over artificial. It's really not gonna cause any problems. It's just a waste of product. And you can kind of build up bulk and we try to fight that once we've done an acrylic. Okay, so now we can go right into our regular. Pull it out of the light, we're gonna do our second coat, go into the top coat, and we are done. So those are our top five ways we can mess up gel polish, and I've done every single one of them more than once. So hope this helped. Let us know in the comments, and thank you. <laughs>